blessedness of a revival is that her flame or the lack of it thereof is to be blamed on man and not God. I'll come again. The Lord sat me down this week and taught me. And I've been authorized to tell you a few things. One, let that remain in you for life. The blessedness of a revival is that her flame or the lack of it is to be blamed on man and not God. Oh, what a wonderful blessing. If a revival drops, blame man. If a revival stays away, blame man. God is never to be blamed for the flame or the lack of it. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 7, verse 8, and verse 9. Give me first in the King James and then we'll go to classic amplified. The word says, before she traveled, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Who had heard such a thing? Or who had seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? Look at the response. For as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. I want you to follow carefully. Verse 9. Shall I bring to birth? Or shall I bring to the birth? And not cause it to bring forth. Saith the Lord. Shall I cause to bring forth. And shut it or shut the womb. Saith thy God. Now place this in the classic amplified. And see light break forth. Before Zion travailed she gave birth. Before her pain came, or before her pain, before her pain came upon her, she was delivered of a man child. Eight. Who had heard such a thing? In other words, how will you say you gave birth without traveling? Who had seen such things? Shall a land be born in one day, or shall a nation bring forth in a moment? This is the key. For as soon as Zion was in labor. In labor, she brought forth her children. Now, verse 9 is very key. Shall I bring to the moment of birth and not cause to bring forth, says the Lord? Shall I, who causes to bring forth, shut the womb? In other words, I am not to blame. For the lack of the flame. If you travail, you will bring forth. It's guaranteed. Now in Ephesians 3.20, as we lay this foundation, this is what the word says. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we may ask or think. And many times we shut our Bible there. Leaving it to God. 
But look at the next verse, which is as important as the previous. The next sentence, sorry, in that verse. According to the power that worketh in us. Follow me. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all we may ask or think. So the church says, if God wants to give us a revival, he will. Why kill ourselves? But he says it's according to what is working or happening or burning in you. You, me, you, me, you, me. Hold the keys to this revival. According, according, according. Please hear this. You cannot blame a lamp for not burning. But blame the oil for not being present. So also you cannot blame God for the fire not burning. But man must be blamed for the oil not being present. Not God. Not society. But man. But man. But man. Every oil that has lamb will produce, every lamb, sorry, that has oil will produce fire. But every lamb, no matter how beautiful it is that lacks the oil, it will lack the fire. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1, beginning all the way to verse 9. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps. All of them had the lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took the oil in their vessels with the alarms, remember we are vessels. While the bridegroom tarried, because it is those who tarry that we carry. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made. Just like I'm making a cry this morning. A cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil, not of your lamp, not of your fire, but of your oil. Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out, but the wise answered, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. The oil is at a cost. Hetus, hifrus, sakane, nekotosifra, naneka. Go and buy. It's at a cost. Go and buy. It's at a cost. Go and buy is at a cost. It was oil. The Lord showed me that those in the upper room had. When the oil is there, the fire will burn. So they were, they were buying oil from Acts 1.14. Continued in prayer. Now, don't be mistaken when you see one statement in one verse. For instance, the Bible summarizes Elijah's prayer ministry as he prayed. You can read over it and say, all right, I know how to pray. Don't be mistaken that hours, moments, months, years are encapsulated in one sentence. He prayed. Look at Jesus it was said about him at the tomb of Lazarus. He came with oil. 
He said, Father, thank you. For I know you have heard me. And someone will say, well, I guess I can just go to the tomb and command the dead to be raised. Because I see Jesus simply said, you have heard me. But when he heard Lazarus was dead and he separated himself, who was there to account what he did? He prayed. But the oil. But the oil. Those who moved revivals were used in revivals and were prominent figures in revivals paid the price. In fact, Leonard Ravenhill said, the secret of praying is praying in secret. That is, if you see anyone stand out in the public and pray for a few minutes and fire falls, it's not a few minutes. The prayer was done. You only heard the declaration. The secret of prayer is praying in the secret. I introduce to you today the oil that must be in the lamp of everyone that will be lit up. It is prayer. Prayer. God's duty is to answer. Man's duty is to call. If there is no answer, there was no call. Take this and it will help us. The same Leonard Ravenhill, a man who was mightily used of God in World War II, if you have that, thank you. He said, Revival delays. Because prayer decays. Revival delays. Because prayer decays. The five minutes we give to a prayer point in a service can't bring revival. Revival delays. Because prayer decays. George Herbert, another great man used in centuries past, he said, prayer is the soul's blood. Prayer is your soul's blood. Prayer is the soul's blood. Without giving to prayer, you have no blood in your soul. Soul's blood is prayer. Charles G. Finney said, There can be no revival when Mr. Amen and Mr. Wet Eyes are not found in the audience. I'll come again. Charles G. Finney said, there can be no revival without Mr. Amen and Mr. Wet Eyes found in the audience. William Booth, the one who began Salvation Army. That was actually a revival moment. Not what it has become today. They call his name William Booth. He sent out some salvation ministry or salvation army officers to a dry land to revive the land. And they wrote to him, no telephones those days, they wrote to him and posted to him. 
Mr. Booth, we have done everything we know to do, but we haven't seen a move of God. Can you imagine William Booth's response? This will stick in you because it caught fire in me. One sentence back to them. Guess what he said? Try tears. They received the letter from William Booth. Try tears. They went to God in tears. Revival. Boom. William Booth said, there is no secret. It is amazing that even though it shouldn't be a secret, it remains a secret. Try tears. The oil. The oil. The oil. No wonder the price for revival remains the same. It is called travail. Every true travail comes with pain. Comes with sweat. Comes with tears. And comes with blood. Every true travail comes with pain. Comes with sweat. Comes with tears and comes with blood. You think the first revival in the upper room broke loose without blood spilled? They call them martyrs. You think the first revival broke loose without pain? They were beaten, they were whipped. They returned to their own company. They cried before the Lord. You think it came without tears? Oh, what a generation that thinks the stories will birth another one without going through the process. Revival is simply the product of a process. How can you end at a product without knowing the process? And so we go claiming we will see another revival, but we don't know the process. We don't know the oil. How many of the revivalists lived very long? God didn't kill them. The process not handled with wisdom took them. What then is a revival? I've shown you the oil and I've described the process in a few but little words. Now let's look at the product where many churches begin without following the process. What is revival one? It is a move of the spirit that steers the spirit of men to kingdom, advancement, and divorce. Revival is a move of the spirit that steers the spirit of man to commit to kingdom, advancement, and divorce. A few scriptures we are all used to in this commission. Haggai chapter 1, verse 5 to 14. And Haggai chapter 2, verse 3 to 9. Talking there about this outbreak and God saying, Complaining actually about his people. You are going about in your sealed houses. And I've forgotten that my house lay in waste. That's prior to the revival. But when the revival lands, as we see in Haggai chapter 2, verse 3 to 9. What happens? The silver is mine. The gold is mine. And they will be used to build this house. So a revival is that move of the spirit that steers the spirit of men to commit to kingdom advancement and devils. Steering of the spirit requires tears. Oh no se clado shafara da bahande ketea. The spirit of God cannot be steered without the tears of man. The tears of man. The tears of man. Oh yes Lord, shall I show them? Look at a few scriptures we read but not understand. I read some of them to us at the end of the service. 
as the altar is opened. In John chapter 2, 15 to 30, we'll read that later on as we close. He calls the priest, the people, the elders, and the young after blowing the trumpet in Zion, as we are hearing, to weep, 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 weep before the altar. And then after they weep, what happens? There's an outbreak. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. We are quoting the pouring out of the spirit and forgetting to quote the weeping of the saints. Now look at this. Psalm 126 verse 1 to 6. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. Is it not in Zion we're expecting the revival? Then was our mouth filled with laughter, our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. Revival has happened, whereof we are glad. Now turn again. Our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Ha! Those that sow in tears. He's not talking about your seed. Give him money. That's part of it. Sowing in tears. Sharadabaha de shadara. Ha no toshkara. Dero neno sakara. Vranania nanaka. If he's travailed, it will come with tears. He just showed us how he turned the captivity of Zion. That's a revival breaking loose. But it took place by men's knees being on the ground. And tears flowing. <laughs> Haven't you observed? In the protocol system of heaven, before there is laughter, there is sorrow. <laughs> for weeping, men endure for a night. He began to open my eyes. He said, why do you think every weep is a weep of challenges? The church has preached it. That those that, you know, we be men for a night, that means you've had problems. No, we have a problem in the world that we don't see the revival of God. It's a big enough problem. It may endure for a night, night, but joy cometh in the morning. <laughs> Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10, I believe. Neither be ye sorrowful. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Ah. And he began to say, why do you think before joy there is sorrow? Why do you think before laughter there is weeping? It's the process that bats the product. Revival is the product. Intercession travail, with pain, with sweat, with tears, and with blood is the process. This ministry will have died in one corner except a man began to cough blood. The process before the product Show me anywhere God has really moved. And I will show you men who truly traveled. It will never change for generations. Place your hand on your head. Empower me, Lord, for the process. Pray in the spirit right now. Neko shad radish. Nano krodos. Lafrada. The steering requires tears. Sapala. Rish Frada Nenonos. Naradash Karadaya. A revival is said to occur. Now, anytime in this church you hear revival, you say product. While everybody else around the world claps for the product, ask what's the process. So this product occurs, the product of revival occurs when two things happen. Number one, when the word of God continues to come alive 
in one's heart in increasing dimensions. Ay, 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 ay. That's when a revival is said to occur. The world suddenly catches fire in the hearts of men. Then a revival is said to occur. It pierces the strongest and the prideful heart. Then a revival is said to occur. For his word is like a fire. Shut up. In my bones. <laughs> Jeremiah said. But as you begin to read from Jeremiah chapter 1. You find a weeping prophet. Traveling. Agonizing. Weeping. In blood. And in pain. And suddenly the world has now become like fire. Shut up in his bones. Product process. At this point, after passing through the process, the spirit encapsulates the word. <laughs> the spirit enfires the word, and the spirit empowers the word. Remember, product process. A great revivalist, I can't remember his name, said. He said, every minister of the gospel needs at least a day to prepare the word, the soul food. And needs another day to prepare himself for the word. <laughs> I'm not quoting him verbatim, but that's what the Lord opened my eyes to see. The 21st century minister prepares for the word, but doesn't prepare his vessel for the word to flow through. We can preach the same thing, but when the spirit encapsulates one, the spirit enfires one, the spirit empowers one, the impact is different. A bullet cannot kill. It is a bullet in a gun that kills. I can use a bullet now, hit it, you will keep smiling. But put it in a gun that has the ability to fire. And then what you played with, what any child can play with, becomes a missile. Are you and I missiles in the hand of God? Number two, a revival is said to occur when going, going to church becomes a way of life. Product, process. It will never become a way of life in our generation until the process is followed. When revival breaks loose, everyone follows up themselves to be in Zion. Psalm 84, verse 1 to 7. Acts chapter 2, verse 47. The church at that stage, after being birthed in prayer, cannot be refused because it's the life-giving center of the world. It's the solution center of the world. It is the city of refuge of the world. So everybody naturally flows in. That happens when the process has been followed. In this 
breaking invisible barriers. I want us to appreciate that invisible barriers are real, but so also is our invisible God. Instead of celebrating the barriers that are invisible, let's activate the God that is invisible. I submit to you the solution. But activating the invisible God requires paying the price. Is there an invisible barrier in your life? Locate the invisible God. For the sea saw him and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like lambs. What ailed thee, O sea, that thou fleddest? Thou Jordan, that I was driven back. Ye mountains that ye skip like rams, and ye little hill like lambs. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of God. But getting the invisible God to work for you requires the following. One, becoming an authentic son and daughter. Of God. Authentic. Authentic. We are told that the world is looking for authentic leaders. God is looking for authentic children. Sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. Who will live pretense? Who will live guile? Who will leave popularity to follow him? Who will lose friends? Who will lose family? Who will lose neighbors? Who will lose money to follow him? Paul the apostle said, I count these things for dunk, for the knowledge of my Savior. Becoming an authentic son. And daughter. Number two, activating the invisible God will require intercession. And this is what Moses, who led them through, that God used. Why are they crying unto me? Intercession. Number three, activating the invisible God will require direction. Tell them that they go forward. He knows where the invisible barriers are. By choice, he can lead you through the invisible barrier or lead you around it. But as long as it's your shepherd, you cannot be stranded. Rise on your feet. That's what it takes. Lift your eyes. And let's pray in the spirit. Necro shala da bahaya. No skledo shanani anana baha. Loro sifra de endonono shkala da bahaya. Neko no siskrene no shala hande ne mehia. Radabahash, Kledie. 
Na no 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 sklendo shikra ne no shavaraha. Ne la no no Rada balabaya ikoto siyalaraba. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Joel chapter 2. Verse 15, we'll try to read this as quickly as we can. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify it fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children. And those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go of his chamber. And the bride of our closet. Let the priests, the ministers of God, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should the people say, where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and have pity upon his people because they have wept. Yea, the Lord will say, he will answer and say to his people, I will send you corn and wine and oil. That sounds familiar. And you shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the brethren. Verse 21. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. For now, he will do great things. And the floors, verse 24, shall be full of wheat. The vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of your Lord who has dealt wondrously with you. Dealt wondrously with you in your season of tears. Dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know, verse 27, I am in the midst of Israel. Reviver. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. After the weeping, after the wailing, after the repentance, after the priests, the people, the elders, the young children, all bow before him for a cleansing. Sound the alarm. Sanctify my people people I found myself laying prostrate before the Lord in repentance not just prostrate on the ground but prostrate in the heart the more time you go towards the holies of holies the more you find how filthy you are to get close No one looking around 
But let's honor Jesus. I sound this alarm. Not because you are wicked. But the truth is can you be flamed? Can I be flamed? Leonard Ravenhill said, it becomes increasingly impossible to gossip about the one you pray for. And increasingly impossible to gossip if you are in prayer. Strife, wickedness, Unforgiveness, backbiting, trap setting. If the walls were to expose your hidden discussions, who will stand before him? God knows the least we ever want to do is to get anyone's details who are trying to get out of detention. Wherever. Security clear the aisles. And let everyone. Who wants to join me. Weeping before the Lord. For whatever it is. Make your way. Now. To the altar. Process remains the same. The process remains the same. You know that there is filth in you. <laughs> For if the Lord will count iniquity, who will stand? You know that there are things in you around you held on within you, trapped within you that will hinder you from being that vessel with cloven tongues of fire upon their head. New member, old member, any race, any color, rush down and let's make it right with him. Let's make it right with him let's make it right with him the things we beg for the things we long for do not matter much make your way they shall no chrono su safari Ne no 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 se no 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 shanine Narahas Krish Faradi. As you get to the altar, lay prostrate before him. He points out any area of your life. Confess. Repent. Do not repent. Repent. For the kingdom of God is near. Repent. 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 Do not repent. Repent. Forgive me Lord for my inconsistencies. Forgive me, Lord, for the sin that only you and I know about. Forgive me, Lord, non o shagaradesh. Elu sufronunu sanenenu shadi indenesh. La los krada shalabahan de nonos. Elili savranenu krono sunu sagigla nenono sagaradi shaba nenono negra namanine nene ane nene ne shininos rananeno krono salano sa 
neniash ne klos krende klos kladish klash krono nenean nane krono no no sianana nenean nanana nanana ya thank you jesus hold it And so the Lord just reminds me now of what I read through this week. And this apostolic writer, Leonard Ravenhill said, The church is at an all-time high in attendance. But an all-time low in those that come to the kingdom. <laughs> I'll say it again. There is an all-time high of those who walk through the doors. And this was in the early 1940s. It's almost the same today. We said there's an all-time low in those who enter into the kingdom. Being a member of a church doesn't make you a member of the kingdom. I appeal to you still struggling. Heaven and earth will pass away. But not one jot this word will go on fulfilled. One of the things God wants to do in this season is to break our pride. Break our thirst for relevance. And so I found myself praying, break me, O oh Lord. Break me. Break me, oh Lord, break me. Break me, oh Lord, break me. And as I said those words repeatedly, 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 he spoke through my lips and said, for it is only those that are broken that can be molded. I said, break me, oh Lord, break me. Break me, oh Lord, break me. Break me, oh Lord, break me. For it is only those that are broken that can be molded. And moments passed, and moments passed, and moments passed, and the same word couldn't leave my lips. Break me. For it is time to break your fallow grounds. Break me, Lord. Every step towards the altar is a breaking. Break me, Lord. Break me, Lord. Break me, Lord. Break me. Break me. Break me. Break me. For it's only those that are broken that can be molded. Lalo Shadi Adada. Hey, Now, everyone who has made that decision, start speaking to God. Break me, cleanse me, help me. Nano Sh. He Keteri Shanaya. Enonos. Larada. This is a call for sanctification. Nane keteni sonorus evrana no 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 sande nenea. Larahash krene no rosh. Lelo sefrus sanane no no no. Eklado sharadaya. Begin to repent. <laughs> Don't repent. Repent. 
repent, 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 repent. Should he not point something to you and say, is that what offends you, my lover? No, I'm sorry I hurt you. I repent of my stinking thinking. I repent of my ill will. I repent of backbiting, manslandering, fornication, adultery. I repent. I repent, I repent, I repent. I repent, I repent. I repent. Oh, I repent, I repent, I repent. I repent, my God. I repent. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Giving an opportunity to everyone. No one is to be blamed if we are not flamed. No one is to be blamed if we are not flamed. No one is to be blamed if we are not flamed. No Lord, behold your children. And children, behold thy father. Thank you, Lord, for cleansing us from priest to the people, to the elders, to the children. That we may be vessels that can be trimmed with the oil leading to the fire. I give you praise. Lord, may all of us not miss it on resurrection morning. That we not, may not be in church without being in touch. That at the marriage supper of the Lamb, we may all be present in our robes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Those in front, go back. Lord, as the oil, which is no longer olive oil, but holy anointing oil, it comes upon our heads. Let every invisible barrier be shattered. For the invisible God cannot open the door. Whether they be visible or invisible, and the door does not obey him. Therefore, by this oil upon our heads, limitations shattered, oppositions shattered, and invisible barriers destroyed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now go ahead, anoint yourself. Lift up your hands and give him praise. Father, thank you.
For you are glorious And worthy To be praised For the land Upon the throne, oh, and on to you, we lift our voice in prayer for the land. Wow, I'm sure you were blessed by this video that you just watched. The truth is this, without action, revelation is impotent. And so what will you do having heard the things you have heard? I'm sure something has been fired into your spirit. It's now time to take action. Make sure you like, you subscribe, you comment, and you share this video with everyone. Let's spread the fire across the nations of the earth because we will see a revival in our generation. God bless you.